Hi, my name is Olga and this is Experts on Talks. Today we will talk with Jakub about design systems. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so let's start. Jakub, can you please tell a few words about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. My name is Jakub. I'm front-end developer at uh, Frontend House. And thanks for having me. That's okay. I'm glad to see you here. So today we will talk about design systems. Could you please tell me what design system is? A design system is a set of uh, design rules, constraints, patterns that describe our product. Design system includes uh, things like colors, uh, typography, uh, naming conventions and so on. And the easiest way to think about what design system is, is to uh, imagine a world if we didn't have design systems. And basically every website you would enter, uh, would, every button on those websites would have different colors. So we would see one button that would be blue, the next button would be green, and it would cause a mess, mm -hmm. it would be a mm -hmm. chaos. Uh, and, and that's it. <laughs> that is what a design system is. So every business needs design system? No, obviously not. Because if you're just starting out as a business and you, for example, have only one product that is still in a prototype version, then you don't need to focus on design system. You don't need to have a, a strict uh, set of rules. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not necessary at this point yet. That means that when company is small, we need another kind of rules, not design system? I would say that if we're starting out as a business, having some set of rules, but those uh, rules don't have to be written. They mm -hmm. can be just uh, spoken rules mm -hmm. and we don't have to include them in a design system because mm -hmm. at the very beginning, when we're prototyping our product, it isn't necessary to spend that much time on setting uh, strict rules. So, as I understand, the design system is a giant set of rules which are written and created by designers, right? Yeah, that's correct. Design system is, of course, a team effort. So, not only designers work on a design system, it's more like the whole business uh, develops design system to create some products. Jaku, please tell what are pros and cons of design systems so the main pros of design systems is that if for example uh, our business works on multiple projects uh, then it's really nice to have just one set of rules that are well we define them once and then we reuse them in other projects so we create like reusable components and conventions it also makes development more cost efficient as well as it's easier to scale our products because um, once we have the design system, it's easier to introduce new uh, products to our business, mm -hmm. uh, as well as it's easier to introduce new employees because and the onboarding process is a lot shorter because we have all the rules and conventions written out in one place and a new person abroad don't have to constantly ask the same questions. We have just great documentation about our project. It's like knowledge is decentralized and everybody has an access uh, to this information, right? That's correct. And we have a solid documentation that everyone can uh, look up to and find what they need. That sounds as it should be. I know that some companies even show their design systems yeah, to right. just to set an image and mar make marketing on it. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Because if you have the design system already prepared, uh, it usually looks really nice. And why not to show it <laughs> to yeah, the why world? Not to show it? If it looks awesome, then why not? Makes sense. Why not? And let's go straight to cons. Sure, there are some. Yeah, and what are uh, the cons? One of the cons, it's more like a trap for uh, people that are starting out uh, creating their design systems, mm -hmm. is that they sometimes uh, include things that aren't used in their products. 
Like for example, let's say that I have a product that um, just displays some charts and does a lot of uh, backend work, mm -hmm. uh, but don't have any form. And for some reason, people in design system include all the inputs, all the checkboxes that just aren't used within the products. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a waste of time in this case. We don't have to think of everything at the very beginning and most likely it will change anyway. So we're like making the same work two times. So making too much is not good too? Yeah, I'd say if we just want to create a design system, we should probably start with the most necessary things mm -hmm. and then grow as we proceed with our mm -hmm. business. And develop step by step. Yeah, that's correct. Also, another thing to mention is that if we have a design system, we have to constantly update it. So living thing, whenever uh, we want to change something with our product, we should start with design system. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, uh, well, then design system will become a kind of useless thing that nobody wants to see. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> even see, <that's>, not even use. <laughs> yeah, because it will have outdated information. Mm -hmm. So the documentation isn't updated, mm -hmm. then it becomes sort of useless, right? Yeah, it work, works this way, I think. And are there more cons you want to t talk about? I think those two that we talked about are the most uh, vivid ones. Mm -hmm. And they are not really more traps rather than, uh, well, creating design systems just takes time, which may be potentially could be spent on something, some, some problem solving at the uh, beginning, but yeah. So we have to remember it about these two cons. How do you use design systems as developer? Design systems are basically my bread and butter when I'm creating reusable components like buttons, uh, inputs, inputs, checkboxes, and uh, so on. I also sometimes like to um, use libraries like Material.io, which are basically a design system. Mm -hmm. when creating prototypes uh, because sometimes I just don't feel like uh, thinking too much about uh, the design and I just want to focus on problem solving and I think, think libraries like Material I.O. are just awesome uh, in this case. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, like having a solid design system helps for example, if I'm working on two different products that use the same uh, style guide, I like to create a shared library between them and it's much easier if, it, if I have a design system. So it is really helpful in your work and you can't work without it, right? Well, it's much easier to work with design systems because I know that uh, if like a global change to all the reusable components occur, then I can just start like separate the visual tasks from from the logic and just work on the visual uh, thing and it will update it on my products because I have a shared, shared <laughs> library. Uh, and it's just very convenient and really uh, saving a lot of time. And please you tell me what is Storybook and how to use Storybook? Yeah, Storybook is a tool that developers use and it helps to recreate the design system on the code level. So it's like a library that allows you to like showcase all the components that we have in our code so we can just preview any component at a given time. It's also sort of like a testing utility because we're running the storybook and we can try all the different variants and so on. It's also very helpful when a new person comes to into the project because um, if, for example, uh, they want to create some button and they don't know if anywhere in the system this button has already been created, Storybook is a place where uh, they will find it. Are there any pros that Storybook offer? Sure, like the biggest one is definitely the documentation. Every component that we create that is in Storybook uh, is just very easy to use uh, afterwards. And, uh, it makes, makes, just makes, makes life simple. How to create a design system? Basically, uh, when starting out as a business, first of all, we need to recognize if we need the design system at all. Because if we're creating a very small application that 
has minimal to no UI, then it's probably not necessary to include design system. We have other things to, to worry about. But if we decide that we want to create a big application, then it's sure a really good idea to um, start with uh, creating the design system as early as possible. And then my only advice is to start really slow and we don't have to include every, everything uh, at the very beginning and it's easy to fall into a trap because if we look at other design systems like for example Material.io and uh, then we will see that they include all sorts of different things like for example the guidelines for voice and our application might not have any <laughs> voices at all uh, like uh, iconography uh, and you just might not need that at the very beginning. Uh, so uh, my advice is that uh, when creating design systems, we should start really slow and only include things that are crucial to our, our application and to our understanding of our products and then uh, expand from there. If you need technical advice, you can always ask our front-end house experts. Just click a button free consultation on frontendhouse.com. Thank you so much for interesting conversation about design systems. Thank you too for watching this video. You can find other videos on Frontend House YouTube channel and see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>